Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Coffee Talk. And we're going to be talking about the ridiculous, the crazy, and the bizarre, as well as the spiritual aspects behind world events and, most notably, the Maui Fire. Now, there's a lot of really good information out there with specifics about things going on down on the ground in Maui. We're not going to touch on all of those topics, but suffice it to say, there is a lot of information out there that suggests that not is all is not what it seems with the fire. What are we going to get into? All kinds of stuff today. People are waking up. A pilot dies mid-flight. And another plane engine catches on fire. It was all caught on videotape. Also, with regards to the Maui fire, utility trucks blocked the escape routes. And we're also going to cover a story about police literally running a woman down in an intersection who was waving a gun. So let's go ahead and get started. Welcome everybody, it's Sunday. Glad you can make the show today. So, it appears as though electricity is the emerging boogeyman of the Maui fires. They're literally now trying to blame the fires on damaged power lines. Really? Well, let's read about what they're saying here. First reported Maui fire may have been caused by damaged power lines. Let's see if we can uh, play this here says are their needs how does that square with what you're seeing on the ground excellent question terry the people here need so much right i talked to them and okay terry i've been here for a week for seven days for seven days people have been looking at me straight in the eye saying melissa we need help melissa we need help they're probably saying this isn't what everyone says it is but of course they're not going to report that are they that is all that's playing in my head, Terry. So while, yes, it's comforting to hear that from the federal government, I do have to share that message that for the last seven days, these people have been screaming for attention. Exactly their fears were things like the federal government's going to forget about us. We're afraid because we're here out in Hawaii on an island that folks won't listen to all of our needs. They've been saying from the beginning they need more search and rescue teams because it is going so slow. So, yes, welcome news, Terry. But I do want to speak for the people people on this island that they want support and they don't want that support to go away either they want i mean look at the devastation this is just unreal support to stay with them for as long as possible terry a absolutely the trauma that people are experiencing given the shock of the of that conflagration that consumed so much of their island needs attention and jay that's pressure on the administration to perform Exactly right, Terry. The administration has been trying over the last few days. Limited electricity, cell phone service, of course, because then they can control the flow of information, can't they? With no electricity and no cell phone service. So they can pretty much shape the narrative of what's happening there. Let's read about this. Maui's first report of wildfire last week may have been caused by damaged power lines. According to newly released research conducted by a power monitoring company, on August 7th, more than an hour before Maui authorities said the first fire erupted, a security camera at the Maui Bird Conservation Center in the East Maui region of Upcountry captured a bright flash in the woods. It's windy and then there's a flash and I think that's when a tree is falling on a power line. Now, Interestingly, they don't show you that footage because guess what? It would be nice to see this footage that they claim started the fire. Why don't we have access to that is the question. A lot of questions with this, aren't there? Now, as I said, electricity is the theme when it comes to this fire. And apparently... They're saying, the residents are saying, that their escape was blocked by power trucks. Let's read. 
Maui residents say utility trucks block roads as they try to flee. Three survivors of the wildfires said Wednesday that the infer in the when the inferno erupted, the main escape route out of the town was partly blocked by Hawaiian electric trucks, clearing a down line and replacing busted power poles. The result was an epic bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic while we were trying to escape. There were no police officers in sight. What there was were Hawaiian electric trucks coming in with new telephone poles. Instead of waiting for everybody to get out, they were blocking the only way out with their big trucks. Wow. Now, we've been covering the Blacklist series, and Raymond Reddington was a professional mastermind of crime, wasn't he? And he often used utility trucks, emergency vehicles, to perpetrate his crimes because he could hide in plain sight. And it makes you wonder... If these utility trucks knew there was a fire and knew there were people stacking up trying to escape, why wouldn't they simply move out of the way? People were literally yelling at them, get the F off the road and let us go by, is what they said. Unreal. And so this was a huge failure, wasn't it? Look at this, here's some pictures of it. People could not get out. Now, apparently, these were live power lines that they were dealing with here. But these were not power lines affected by the fire. They're saying this was because of the wind that had knocked over these power lines. And at this point, you have to ask yourself, what was the priority of these emergency personnel? People are trying to escape a fire. That seems like it would be the priority. Not restoring electricity at this point. That would come after the fires, which people still don't have electricity. Obviously, there was a massive amount of devastation. So it'll take these people a long time to get their electricity restored. Now, there's something else going on. The water is now poisoned in Maui. Now they're blaming it on the fires, but this is really shaping up to be an annihilation of all services. Almost seems like a reset, doesn't it? Let's read about what's going on with the water in Maui. Maui water is unsafe even with filters. One of the lessons learned from fires in California the language is stark. People in torched areas of Maui should not try to filter their own drinking water because there's no way to make it safe. So, with no water, no electricity, most people are going to move out of this area. The message reached Anne Riello and her husband in Kula, who are eating yet another meal of frozen pizza. The couple feels incredibly lucky that they and their home survived the fires that raced across Maui in the recent days, wiping out most of Lahaina. 114 people so far. There are many people believe, that believe that this casualties are far higher than this, even. When a neighborhood organization alerted them not to drink their water and to air out the house even if they run the tap, the couple decided to eat off paper plates to avoid exposure. No washing dishes. It's alarming that it may be in the water system for a while. Brita filters, devices connected to refrigerators or sinks, and even robust whole home systems are unlikely to address the extreme contamination that can happen after a fire. Now, I had never heard of this before. That fires can cause the water to be contaminated? What's this about? Let's keep reading and see if we can find some answers to this. They will remove some of it, but levels that will be acutely and immediately toxic will get through. The Maui fires damage hundreds of drinking water pipes, resulting in loss of pressure. that can allow toxic chemicals, along with metals and bacteria, into the power lines. So this is why they're saying that it's contaminated. You can pull in contaminated or dirty water from the outside 
even when those lines are underground. Hundreds of families could be in the same situation where people have been told to minimize any contact with county water, including showers. Oh boy, what a disaster. It's just crazy to me. I mean, look at this. There's nothing left. These houses were literally burned down to the ground. The only thing left in some instances is are the brick, the block used to build some of these homes. But other than that, it's pretty much burnt down to the ground. I've never seen anything like this before in my life. Well, many of you have a paradise fire. So that's what's going on in Maui. Now this next story is weird. Spiral shaped tampons are now a thing. Now I know this sounds kind of funny, but remember I showed you guys how the female reproductive system has a spiral musculature to it? Here it is right here. Many of you remember these decodes that we did on the female anatomy and the spiral musculature. And now all of a sudden, they have claimed to have invented a spiral tampon. Really? Let's read about this. It's been 90 years since Tampax created the first modern tampons, and the product's design remains mostly unchanged. But the FDA just approved a new design that could change the appearance of a product that has looked the same for decades. What is this about? The design patented by the independent startup Sequel. Huh, that's interesting. The Sequel to what? Has diagonal grooves that spiral down the product. The brand's founders say the product's helical shape better absorbs fluid, which leads to less leakage and more reliable experience. I wonder if it's because it's spiral. Before tampons can be legally sold in the U.S., products must go through the FDA's pre-market review to determine that they are safe and effective. The, the question is, why now? That is the question about this. Why now? now wow so crazy world you guys crazy world all right what else do we have going on well thank goodness for co-pilots right a pilot died on flight 505 in the bathroom mid-flight with 271 passengers on board Let's read about this. Now we all know why some of these pilots are dying. I think we have yet to have a pilot die actually on a flight. But look at this. An airline pilot died after collapsing in the bathroom of a Miami to Chile flight with 271 passengers aboard. He was feeling unwell three hours into the flight from Florida to Santiago and after collapsing in the bathroom he received medical treatment from the crew the flight took 30 minutes to divert to Panama City's Tucuman International Airport and first responders declared Andor a 20, not 25 year veteran pilot dead when the plane landed it was operating a 787 Dreamliner left Miami at 10 11 p.m. on Monday, August 14th, and also had a relief captain and a first officer on board when the incident took place. Oh boy, I wonder what the comments say. Let's take a look. 4,000 comments. Now, these news stories are still censoring comments. And so, you know, we're not going to get a lot of the truth out of the comments. But there is a particular story we're going to cover a little bit later in the show today. In which lots and lots of people are waking up. Here's a completely different flight. And apparently, the 
airplane caught fire. Let's take a look. I think there's some video of this down here. Oh, wait a minute. Let's reset this. Oh, boy. This was the terrifying moment for passengers aboard a Southwest flight Tuesday night as flames shot out one of the aircraft's engines shortly after leaving Houston's Hobby Airport. Now, who got this thing on film is the question. The flight bound for Cancun forced to turn back. 307, you still have uh, one engine shut down, is that correct? We have the ready to shut down. The plane made a successful emergency landing in Houston. The passengers' lives were not in imminent risk. This is an abnormal situation, but it's one that we train for. FlightAware data shows the plane was only in the air for about 27 minutes before making the emergency landing. Southwest. So if it was in the air 27 minutes, who the heck was filming this thing is the question, right? And if it was in the air 27 minutes, everybody knows how hard it is to film a, an aircraft that is moving at a high rate of speed. Let's see if the article tells us who filmed this thing. Tells NBC News the plane experienced a mechanical issue shortly after takeoff and that a different aircraft continued the flight to Cancun. And from one flight scare in Houston to another in Miami, after one of three pilots aboard a LATAM flight en route to Chile, died mid-flight from a medical emergency. Two other pilots on board... So that was the story that we just covered. Let's see if the article tells us who was flying or who was filming that plane that caught fire. Flames burst from a southwestern airline jet in the sky near Houston, forcing the distressed plane into a hasty retreat and a safe landing they even showed the landing it was almost like someone was filming the landing as well the aircraft landed safely was taken out of service for review a different aircraft continued the flight to cancun video oh here we go video taken from the ground captured the terrifying scenes of flame shooting from flight 307's right engine What's that word? Belying? Belying the routine exchange between pilot and tower arranging for its return to hobby. So, again, I asked the question, who was taking the video? And why would they even be filming just a random plane flying the sky 27 minutes after takeoff? I mean, who does that? Obviously, the plane would have been well outside of the airport, right? And just flying over some random countryside or whatever so this sounds very suspicious to me mechanical engineer andro sandino was leaving work near hobby when he looked up and captured a moment of flame shooting out of an engine oh just some random guy but the scenes before he pointed his cell phone up through the sunroof of his truck were even scarier <laughs> really i mean how high was this plane flying you can't capture an airplane that's already 27 minutes out of an airport from a cell phone. It's going to be like a tiny little dot. I noticed big black plumes of smoke coming out of the right engine. And then it started shooting really big fireballs out. And the plane was shifting back and forth side to side pretty heavily. I was thinking this plane may crash. If that engine just completely explodes and sends shrapnel everywhere, the plane is going to fizzle out and hit the ground. <sighs> oh my gosh. This reads like the towers fell due to intense heat, causing them to fall in their own footprint. Boy. Flight 307 was in the air for only 16 minutes before passengers were back on the ground or moved to a new plane. What? Doesn't even jive with what we just read. Anyway, another suspicious story. Now, people are waking up, and here is the good news about all of this. This article, moving on to a different topic, discredits any doctors who spoke out against 
the guidelines or any of this scientific consensus during the pandemic. And it seeks to marginalize them as some kind of small fringe group. They name 52 doctors. Now, if you're a doctor, this is going to be an intimidating thing, almost like a witch hunt. If you said anything that was outside of the official consensus, they've got your name on a list. Now, what gives me hope is this comments section down here. Look at this. They even say that they're controlling the message. Goff said she could not speculate on the motives of the doctor spreading misinformation. Several offered telehealth visits and charged patients for providing therapies that were not supported by science. So perhaps they had a financial motive. Wow. Some may also have even earned money by growing their online presence. She and her co-authors chose not to name the 52 doctors because they did not want to give the medical professionals more attention for their behavior. Our purpose wasn't to call out specific people, more to call out the phenomenon. This is scary, you guys. They're literally on a witch hunt for any doctors that spoke outside of the lines. But here's what gives me hope. Now, I haven't looked at these comments since I pulled this up a couple days ago and preparing for the show. So they may have gone through and taken out some of these comments. But look at this. Because of a law passed in 1991 having drug companies pay the FDA to pass their drugs, the FDA now gets 75% of their funding from Big Pharma. Let's see. Big Pharma controls the FDA and FDA controls the doctors. And look at all the thumbs up for these kinds of comments. Now, i got to be careful moving through these comments, right? Here's a good comment. There is almost never been the time when all doctors were in complete agreement on all matters of medicine and just because the doctors do not agree does not make the various sides of necessity either good or bad also the same evidence can oftentimes be given various different treatments to get to get to a range of conclusions not all of them necessarily true and perfect in all particulars and look at all the thumbs up for this comment so People are waking up, and this is encouraging. And I'll put links to all this. These are different stories you can share and tell people to read the comments and see the overwhelming support for the doctors. And also in the comments, they talk about the concern for this portion of the story. Controlling the message. That's creepy, isn't it? So... Let's get an update on the Ukraine because apparently the U.S. is now sending F-16 fighters to the Ukraine. Now, according to this story, they're only sending the planes, not pilots, because that would ramp things up into a direct conflict with Russia, wouldn't it? If we had our own fighter pilots. But, I mean, it's not much different, is it? We're supplying equipment. Does it really matter who's in the equipment? So, things are escalating in the Ukraine. And I believe this is all done by design. They're ramping up towards some kind of mass casualty event. This is also mass human sacrifice. Hundreds of thousands of men and women, some children, sacrificed at the altar of war. Now, this is crazy. Look at this mystery animal caught on camera in Texas. What is it is the question. Let's see if you guys can figure out what this animal is. New at 10, a strange sighting is baffling Hill Country Village residents tonight. This creature was caught on camera at a north side neighborhood. The property owner took to social media, media asking, what is it? Her post has blown up as many give it a wild guess. As now, you have to wonder what this thing is. Now, it could just be a coyote with mange. Mange can 
alter, dramatically alter the appearance of any animal, making them look like a completely different species. But what do you guys think this thing is? And Let's Cyber keep reporter this. Hannah Tita tells us the photos are even stumping experts. What do you think this animal is? No one quite knows what to make of it. Large animal, kind of looks like a wolf, but <laughs> not like a neighborhood dog. I would say some kind of cat, like a bobcat, mountain lion. A bobcat? Looks like some kind of like mangy coyote. Last night, a bizarre creature made a visit to Tina Kaling's backyard. I was inside and I looked out into the yard and I was, I looked right here and I saw this animal. I thought, wow, what is that? So she snapped a picture. And I saw him walking around this tree. And Let's I zoom in on this thing. What do you guys think this thing is? Can't really see it. And look at it's got a long tail i mean it could even be a dog almost right it's got a weird shaped neck though and i saw him walking around this tree and whatever it is it has a sweet tooth these are the fruits and they drop on the ground tina was able to get just one more photo before the animal disappeared into a shroud of mist look at his face take that x over there look at his face he's got long ears who knows what that thing is? She turned to her neighbors for help. It's gotten a lot of uh, a lot of posts on next door. In 24 hours, more than 100 people weighed in. Chupacabra. Some people think it's like a cross between a coyote and a dog. According to local legend, an old mountain lion roams Hill Country Village, but no one has been able to get a picture of it, according to city officials. The city manager told us they are on the case. That ain't no mountain lion. Look how short, uh, long its ears are compared to a mountain lion. He's trying to get to the bottom of this somewhat mangy resident. I would love for someone to help me identify, but I just don't have great photos. What do you guys think? Let's go back in the chat. What do you guys think that thing is? Huh. Weird, right? <laughs> now, can't wait to get to our next story. People are wilding out. It's People are just acting strange, aren't they? We're going to cover a woman who's walking around the middle of an intersection waving a gun before the video actually shows police running her over. Some people think it's a dingo. I mean, it could be something hyena. Yeah, it looks like a hyena, doesn't it, Tanya? Maybe it escaped from some kind of research facility. Or maybe hyenas live in the hill country. Who knows? Dingo. It sure does look like a dingo, doesn't it? All right, let's take a look at this crazy video of this woman being run down by police. What the heck is going on? I'm going to zoom this up so you guys can see this. Fun, yo. You Watch this. Kills, so she's waving this gun, right? And it looks like a woman to me. I'm not sure, but it kind of does. Now watch this. She's right in front of this Rite Aid, walking backwards through an intersection, waving a gun. And here comes, bam! What? Now it hit her on the leg. Did she drop the gun? Let's back this up. This is crazy. Whoa. I mean, were they trying to run her over? Look at this. There's the there's the moment of impact. It literally hit her right. Whoa, look, it almost ran over her foot right there. That could have been ugly. Like it could have like crushed her leg. Bam! Wow, she's still is she still holding the gun? It reminds me of that uh what was that movie? Undercover Brother, where he's uh he's in that convertible holding his orange soda and he starts doing donuts. <laughs> you gotta remember that. He starts doing donuts and he holds the soda and the soda never spills as he's doing donuts in the car. That's what this reminds me of. Did she drop the gun? Oh my gosh. Whoa, Yo, that's crazy. Whoa. That's crazy. Where was this? 
Let's read this story and see what this is. What's going on here? Nassau County police ar arrested Ky Kyber Calderon on multiple charges after 911 callers report an armed person waving a pistol at the intersection of North Belmore. And the suspect allegedly aimed it at passing drivers and responding officers. Last I heard, I've never heard of a, a cop car driving over a person or ramming into a person to stop them. I didn't know that was like protocol. Obviously, it worked out in the end. But wow, that is just nuts. All right, what are you guys up to? Good morning, everybody. Now, YouTube is updating its policies again. And this is crazy. Tackling, we're going to call this Kane, sir. Misinformation as part of its updated health policy. So now we have to start speaking in code again. And doesn't this move, this newest move by YouTube speak for itself? Doesn't it infer something just by the very act of them passing this? As people are taking to social media to share their personal stories of unprecedented rates of Cain, sir. And clots and all kinds of other stuff. And they're not allowed to speak about what they might think the common denominator is. So, now we have to navigate that aspect of it. I mean, they wouldn't be changing these guidelines if people weren't talking about Kane, sir, would they? These people reveal themselves as their algorithms adjust to chatter and trends, natural chatter and trends that are happening in our world. And it's sobering, isn't it? It's sobering. Now, tomorrow is going to be a special show. I started watching a brand new Star Trek series. And they literally come right out and they talk. They literally say the word boosters. And that they are specifically adjusted to a person's DNA. As they're talking about warp speed. I mean, I'm shocked that they haven't even revealed a Trump-like character yet. Well, I'll keep watching. I'm barely on the first episode of this Star Trek series. And they literally boost this guy twice. And they call it a booster. And it's just crazy, you guys. It's absolutely nuts. So, that will be tomorrow morning show, 7.30 Central Time. Can't wait to present that to you guys as well. Let's go into the chat and see what you guys are up to. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Better not misgender any anybody by accident either. I know, right? Officer is justified. Yeah, I, I agree with you in that specific instance. What I was calling out was the fact that I would never seen that before. That wasn't the protocol to stop an armed person. You know, I mean, maybe they're, they were afraid to shoot the person because they were black. Maybe that's what this was about. Because of all the controversy about police killings, they figured, why don't we try to take the person out with the car and at least we won't kill them. But it will stop them. Maybe that's what they were up to. But that was even pretty risky. Because as the car was approaching the lady. She could have popped off rounds through the windshield. And killed the officer. So maybe that's what it was about. But yeah. You, you know in those instances. Even that person being shot. Would have been probably justified. Right? But now everybody's so afraid. And they pick and choose the wrong situation to use excessive force when there's a clear reason to use excessive force in this particular instance and they didn't really use it. Everything's backwards now, isn't it? So, 
What do you guys think about that? Thanks, Cynthia. You know, we've talked a lot about also using non-lethal force. They have to come out with new technologies. Wouldn't the uh, spider web, Spider-Man, spider web have been an appropriate device to use in this particular instance? A sticky web shot out of some kind of a cannon. Why don't they arm all police forces with that? To tie up an individual, right? I don't know. I mean, anybody could come up with something that would be better than the options that police officers have now. A person waving a gun in an intersection is pretty much a slam dunk. It, it's almost as if it was suicide by cop is what they were going for. So, thanks Anna. Don't break the law. Be good and do good. I agree with that, Mike. But, as we all know, there are many laws that are very unfair, aren't they? In this instance, waving a gun in an intersection, that's a pretty clear-cut thing that you should or shouldn't do, right? What if cops showed up to your door and said, you can't collect rainwater? <laughs> Am Pavo says, I think it was a guy. So, all right, you guys. Well, I'll let you guys get back to your day. I was able to do some trout fishing yesterday down on the White River. The river is way, way down. They're not letting a lot of water out right now. But it offered me an opportunity to hike down onto the riverbed and find some really deep holes where there was tons and tons of trout chilling. And I caught my limit in about 30 minutes. It was the most fun I've had fishing in a long time. So I brought them home. And uh, I've got them in the fridge, and that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to eat some trout for breakfast. Thanks, Rick and Debs in Idaho. Much appreciated. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I love each and every one of you, and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.